The Anglican Church has thrown the government a curveball over the future of Christchurch's cathedral. It's now proposing gifting it to the government, handing to it responsibilities for the $104 million restoration of the city's most famous building. While placing the cathedral in public hands would be novel, it would not be unprecedented, as our Christchurch reporter Conan Young reports. The option to wash its hands of the cathedral was put forward by the Anglican Church yesterday and will go to a vote at a meeting of its synod in four weeks. It would involve the building ceasing to be used as a church apart from at Christmas and Easter. It comes on top of two existing options including building a new cathedral or fully restoring it. The Christchurch Rebuild Minister Nikki Wagner says she's open to discussing the church's latest offer but wants to do this before the Synod votes on the matter in September so that members can make an informed decision. Look, I'm pleased that the Bishop and the Church Property Trust see the importance of making a decision at the Synod and the fact that they're being creative about what the options are. While she's keeping an open mind, the Minister says shifting ownership to the government would result in the cathedral losing its symbolism. Well, I certainly think it would lose some of its symbolic centre of our city. Our city was built on an Anglican settlement and the church and the cathedral are inextricably linked. One of those wanting to restore the building, Philip Burden, says many Anglicans, including himself, would be sad to see the church cut its ties with the building. It is probably the most significant Anglican building in the country. It represents the aspirations and uh, all the more idealistic expectations of the founders of uh, the Canterbury settlement. So how much of a financial burden would the cathedral represent for the government if it was gifted it by the church? The $104 million restoration plan already involves it chipping in $25 million, with the bulk of the cost, $42 million, being paid out of the church's insurance payout. A church spokesperson says if the cathedral was gifted to the government, then the $42 million would be up for discussion as part of any negotiations. Philip Burden begs to differ and says the insurance money must be spent on the cathedral. That has been affirmed by the Supreme Court. Uh, there is no way a judicial finding of that nature can be, uh, of course, overruled. Uh, however, uh, it is a negotiation, and I have no idea how it's going to play out. An example of how a publicly owned cathedral might work can be seen with Wellington's old St Paul's Cathedral. Facing demolition by the Anglican Church in 1967, the deteriorating building was purchased by the government and restored. An historian with a close connection to the church, Elizabeth Cox, says it's continued to play an important part in the life of the city ever since and hosts everything from weddings and funerals to concerts. Tens of thousands of people, or 100,000 people visit it as tourists every year, um, which is amazing. And then, as I say, all these other events, it's become an active part of the community and a part of the spiritual part of the community even though it doesn't have a parish anymore. The Anglican Bishop for Christchurch, Victoria Matthews, declined to be interviewed ahead of meetings she has this week with church members about next month's vote. In Ōtotahi for Checkpoint, call Conan Young Tene. And obviously we will keep an eye on developments there.